Hi, I'm Joseph Pate with Arbitrage Trade Analytics, and today we're going to be talking about the Arbitrage Bands Level 2. This is not an introductory course. It is the second level course in the Arbitrage Bands. So we're going to dive right into it. Uh, this does assume that you've watched the previous videos and you understand all the parts of this band. Um, one of the things that our uh, viewers uh, have recommended and asked about, uh, I want to start with, is some people are colorblind. Uh, some people have visual issues. Uh, and TradingView uh, has a great level of uh, style options and customizations. So right here, when you're looking at any of the indicators you have up, uh, you can hit the settings cogwheel. Uh, the inputs are how you can turn things on and off about the indicator itself. Uh, you can see different things, not see different things, focus on things. Really play with that. We're going to get into why you would have some on and some off in later strategy videos. But what I want to focus on now is the style. Every single part of the band can be changed. Every item that has a color or a line can be changed in a variety of ways. Um, the most commonly asked is this red green, obviously. Um, so right here, we're going to click on the green and maybe you want it to be purple. And maybe you want the red to be black. And by default, these aren't all the way opaque. They're at 90%. So you can go ahead and make those 100% or make them really pop. And there you have it. You've got uh, different color candles. You can make the background different color. Um, also, um, if you don't like that anymore, you can go up back to the style and you can always go to the defaults button at the bottom and hit reset settings. Now, if you do find settings that you love, you can always hit save as default. Be careful with that. I'm not sure how to set the default back to the default except fixing your colors and then setting that as the new default. So, uh, but just know it's there. You can reset everything and you can set every little part differently. Uh, there is also a night mode. Um, I know a lot of traders uh, enjoy the night mode. You can hit your little three uh, menu button up here in the top left. Uh, the hamburger menu is a lot referred to. And there is a dark color theme. And when you do that, uh, everything really pops. And you can change all these colors as well. Uh, it just depends on your eyes, what you prefer, whatever's going to help you be a more successful trader. Now, one caveat to all of this. Um, night mode is one thing or dark mode uh, is, is a preference. But when you start changing the colors. Uh, if you need to, great, go for it. But if you don't need to, and you just wanna change all the colors, know that we're working in a community, and if you send a screenshot to someone and they're trying to help you learn the bands or see where you went right or see where you went wrong, it really does help to have consistency. So I wouldn't just go changing things from the default unless there's a good reason, uh, but know that it's there and know that you have that power. Um, so we're gonna dive right into the bands itself. Um, so we have all the parts, and I want you to focus on the mean, the middle, the mean, uh, technically, of this band. Well, you also see the black bouncing RSI line, and it can't leave the band. Well, how do we know if this band right here, uh, the arbitrage band, is going to keep going up, is it going to go level to the right, or is it going to fall down? Well, we can tell because this is a bouncing line in a bigger brother band. Uh, so we're going to just go through the band so you can understand the order. The arbitrage band lives inside of the novice band. As you can see, it's starting to get in its upper danger zone, letting us know that it doesn't have as much room to keep going up. So if we're wondering, is this tunnel going to keep growing up? Well, it may have to stabilize a little bit and slow down, and then we'll see what the, band, the next big brother does. So the arbitrage band lives inside of the novice band. The novice band, which has a mean that is a blue-colored line, lives inside of the intermediate band. You can see it bouncing around in here. Intermediate lives inside of advance. And advance lives inside of apocalypse. Now, um, the apocalypse band and the arbitrage band are the two most commonly used. We'll even sometimes leave them on at the same time. What's really interesting is you can see, I'm going to show you a very cool, I wasn't going to get into strategy, but why not? Um, so right here, the arbitrage band is bouncing, its lines going, get in, get out, make some good profit. Well, one of the things that kept this band from keep going up, uh, you could check the novice band, but there are bigger 
celestial bodies at play, if you will. There's these giant orbitals. We we converted a lot of these bands as uh, they have their own gravity and their own pull. Well, that means every time you try to cross one of these uh, lines, uh, it's support or resistance. So I'm going to turn on that apocalypse band again, and you'll notice that this little guy, the arbitrage band, is living, and it gets close to this pulse, the RSI, uh, we call it the pulse, the purple line of the apocalypse band, and it bounces off, bounces off. But when it does break through, when a, when a line crosses another major line, wow, it is usually very good or very bad. And as you can see here, this is a good example of you, you can buy in here on the uh, arbitrage band, but when it crosses here and you get another, there's actually another indicator here, that is a double good, amazing, uh, we call it the goblin vault. Uh, some of us do. It is just a really good situation. Now, in the retrospect or the flip side of that, if it's going down and it crosses through and you get double red, you should have already been out on the first red, but you really want to be out if you're breaking through this pulse going down uh, in any situation. Um, so these parts of this band are extremely helpful in understanding where it's going to go next. So play with it. We're going to get into the strategy of it because it's a much longer video when you start trying to look at how these bands work together. Just know that they live inside of each other. It gets very messy if you have them all turned on at the same time. Um, there's actually some really good strategies if these don't look messy. Sometimes they're all coiled up at the top or the bottom, and um, it's a really, really cool, interesting uh, trade when that happens. Uh, but let me turn these off. We do recommend starting with either just one of these two, playing the biggest band, the Apocalypse, or playing the smallest band, the Arbitrage. Um, there's technically a few smaller bands. Uh, I want to show these since we are talking about. Uh, these have been just recently released. The RSI, the Compass, and Scalp. Uh, the higher up we get on this list, the smaller the band is, which means it has smaller timelines. Uh, and what do I mean by timelines? Well, the arbitrage band that we're looking at here uh, touch the bottom of this danger zone uh, he, right and we'll clean it up this is what people see you don't know how high this is going to go but we do know that this got into the lower danger zone uh, and it should try to go towards the other uh, upper danger zone well, how long does that take how long does it take to get from here to here anywhere in this zone but really here the first part well, we have found through math um, a law of averages, and this is our current um, mathematical output. Uh, we are looking at the hourly chart, as you can tell right up here at the top, uh, and that hourly chart, we're looking at the arbitrage band. So it's just a little uh, table. You can just look at the hourly chart, the arbitrage band, and that's 3 to 12 days. Now, that's trading days. Uh, weekends don't count. So 3 to 12 trading days is the average amount of time it takes to get from one side of the band to the other. Now, remember, this is averages. For every stock that takes 14 days to do it, there's one that does it in one or two days. Um, so it's just the average. Well, let's, let's see if this matches up. April 22nd, as we can see at the bottom, is right about when this first touched. And it really kind of touched in right here. That's April 28th. That's six days which is right smack dab in the middle of our averages. So you can tell that this is uh, definitely very accurate. Uh, these numbers keep getting updated as we get more data, uh, but it helps you predict how long it's going to take you to enter or exit your trade. Um, we have a lot of other indicators, but you do need to be able to predict uh, your timelines. Maybe you're trying to get into another uh, stock um, in the future, and you want to know, am I going to be in this for three months, or am I going to be in this for three days? And our windows of opportunity are right there to help you uh, understand and learn and estimate how long it's going to take you uh, to be in that trade to get to where you want to be. Thank you so much and have a great day.